How much have you played Valve Comp? We all know it's bad. But have you verified for yourself? What if you're wrong? What if I'm wrong? What if common opinion is wrong? Don't blame yourself too much for writing off comp, because I'm not an exception. The last time I played Valve's officially sponsored comp format, it was five years ago. Before that, it was in the closed beta. I did play a lot of the beta. So much so that I made two YouTube videos about it that nobody ever saw, and nobody ever will. <clears throat> so, uh... <clears throat> This is post-Noah. So in this first video I made about Valve Comp Beta, uh, Shonik was on my team. That's kinda cool. Hi, Shonik. Uh, it's like seven years later, but hi! I have never given Valve's comp an honest try after release, and I decided it wasn't worth my time. I'm gonna reassess that. We're crossing those two losses off the ledger, and I'm doing a hundred matches, starting the day after my birthday, where I was crazy hungover. It probably just doesn't show up because it's an unlisted game. Oh, thank god this match is over. I'm gonna shit my pants. Oh, funny. <laughs> For a match to count, it has to show up in the ledger, whatever criteria that is. I'm not entirely sure, because sometimes someone rage quitting invalidates a match, sometimes it doesn't, but failed queues don't count. Matches that are abandonable because people rage quit don't count. If a match fires and the enemy team has a cheating spin bot or whatever, it still counts as long as it shows up in the ledger. My biggest hurdles are going to be my cat and that my keyboard doesn't have an F4 key on it. Who is not ready? Mission begins in 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, first thing I noticed about match 1 is that all my settings were changed. Valve forces certain settings on you when you play comp. I completely forgot. Suddenly, I was forced to have view models, and they were forced to be big, and they changed my graphic settings, and my network settings. I quickly remembered why I've only done a couple matches of this. Regardless, first game wasn't really a match. Not really. I ended up with several relatively competent soldier mains that just walked over the enemy team while I healed them. Now I want you to pay attention to this guy right here. Trading selling. He's brand new to TF2. Zero hats, 30 hours. All of my matches today were recorded over a period of like 8 hours, and this guy was in like all of them. My dude was grinding out his comp TF2 experience for like 12 hours today. And soon I stopped seeing him, because he probably realized how bad this mode is and has respect for his personal time. Match 2! Match 2 is where my dreams of this actually being competitive, uh, fucking died. This isn't comp. This isn't even like a pug. This is a smaller pub. There's always gonna be like a full-time spy, either intentionally trolling or unintentionally throwing because they have like 20 hours in the game, and I'm always gonna have to try to carry, even if I'm the most middling gamer to ever exist. And this was a huge L. Hugest L. I did get a market garden though. Yeah, so uh, in post I realized that that was not a market garden. Um, well, kinda makes me sad. MATCH THREE! The hardest part of match three was even getting a match three. It turns out you can hold entire comp servers hostage by joining into a server, readying up, and then typing retry into your console. I was held hostage in this match for like half an hour. The guy doing it? This fucker. E. He's gonna become a recurring character in this dumbass series. However, I did actually eventually get into real match three. My first sixes payload experience. It was something. Medic flog. Combo cheese just kind of rolled over the enemy team. They could have swapped to Vaccinator and won very handedly, but they didn't. Glorified pub. I sat back and sticky trapped the cart because frankly the other guys had that shit on lock. Match four! Alright, before match four, I queued into competitive CTF Turbine. But a brave soul that ended up in our game took the penalty to his rank and abandoned the match. Absolute hero. I want a moment of silence for Two Fort's bravest troop. And the queue for match four that actually popped, uh, sucked. You know that thing that players do sometimes where they all stack as a single class? What if they all did that in comp? And they were all heavies. And they were not very good at heavy. And we lost. We were straight rolled on, which was a bummer. Like, you gotta have someone that can push and someone that is actually paying attention and can kill the players looking at me. So many times I'd just be behind a heavy and someone would jump me and the heavy would just keep walking. Goodbye, I'll miss you. I, di I did get fucking crazy punked right here. Turns out there's a little place you can hide up there that I've never known about, and I've played Gorge for like 10 years. I gotta try that out sometime. Match 5! Match 5 is the first match I actually remembered to turn on voice chat. 
<laughs> Oopsie. Not that it matters. I turned it off as soon as I ran into the first guy playing ear rape on the mic and saying horrible shit. This round, we had an AFK guy. Our other soldier is still AFK. But even with the AFK guy, we just fucking stepped on him. That's how the first day went, really. I roll, they roll. We roll, they roll. Unsure if this is part of the matchmaking system doing its best to keep everyone roughly equal, or if this is part of the initial placement process. Match 6! Ma match 6 was another loss, but like a close one. We won a match, they won a match. At one point we pushed them into last, but they clutched it and finished out the game 1-2. I can't be upset, especially as it becomes clearer that good games are gonna be really, really rare. Like, this is one in six. Match seven! My team was clueless, but their team was cluelesser. Maybe even cluelessist. Dude. Between the Brass Beast Heavy, the Engineer, the Spy, I eventually gave up on playing Medic and decided to swap to Demo so we could actually win fights against the enemy team's swarm of Heavies and NGs. This one was a win. After I gave up on Med, one of the newer players swapped to Med. Thank God. Match 8! The skill floor is low, but I'm standing on it. And hey, I also stepped on the enemy team this game. Left clicked, right clicked my way into a 15 kill streak and carried the team. Felt good. On offense, I took the quickie launcher because their demo trapped the spawn door. That's it. No strategy, no thoughts, just left click, right click. Match nine. For match nine, I played demo again. And like last time, nothing special. This was win seven, and I should be placed after my first 10 wins. So I'm getting there, I'm getting there. I'm really close to my placements. Match 10! Uh, my first time I queued for match 10, we had someone fall victim to the settings change crash. And we know exactly how well TF2 handles a settings change. Am I into creepypasta? But before I requeued again, I played out the entire match just because I was curious if it would show up in the ledger. And uh, it didn't. Thankfully, I can beat valve spots unfortunately um i can't beat real players fucking horrible i joined and immediately started having network problems no idea if i was being ddosed or if it's just my isp being doo-doo but it was a loss match 11 match 11 had me on fucking insane tilt i'm writing this down while mad i'm reading it while mad i'm fucking livid what the fuck is this got two players that were just dead weight the combat medic and the player who was still figuring out how to walk around with the medic, you get health until he makes line of sight with an enemy. And then his fucking sleeper cell agent activates. And he holds W into a heavy. And on fucking bad water. Enemy team stacked NGs while my team was learning to fucking walk. I'm considering it a miracle that we even got the payload into last. Match 12! Alright, my first Q for match 12 failed because there was either a bot or a script kitty on my team. Uh, the second Q for 12 ended the same way. And the third Q for 12 ended the same way. Eventually, after a couple hours, I got into a match that fired. It was a whole lot of staring at this little rotating TF2 logo. And I was not rewarded for my patience. Uh, huge loss. I love having more kills than most of my team. As medic in sixes. Yeah, sure guys, we need three pyros. Not like they don't have a single heavy that counters all of you. Match 13! But hey, at least I get to be the fucking boot in match 13, which was a <laughs> embarrassing steamroll. Like, I feel bad for the enemy team. This clearly isn't fair. It's just a coin flip to see if you share the team with the good players or the bad players. Match 14! So, match 14 sucked. Like, we played well. And then someone on the enemy team rage quit. And then my team started throwing. And then another player on my team rage quit. And then the entire match was invalidated. And then I had to re -queue. It was a full hour of my life wasted. I would take a loss over an invalidated match. Every time. Especially because Swift Water just takes so fucking long. My real match, 14, was equally dissatisfying. Just another steamroll. 15! Match 15 was like my first actual match in god i don't know how long um where i didn't have multiple failed queue attempts just and it was a really really good match even better my team was a little clueless but hey we had a back and forth and eventually lost one two really great way to kick off my friday night of getting belligerently drunk and playing comp tf2 it also kicks off a miserable dynasty of losses where i stomp the enemy team but my team can't capitalize 16 and 17! I already told you how 16 and 17 went. There were bright spots in my team. Like, occasionally my team had support players that knew how to play support. But the majority of the time, if a push needed to be made, I needed to frag six people in rapid succession and then walk under the point alone. Here's last on Gorge. I sticky trap spawn. I kill two people. Then I pipe the rest. 
I cap point. And then we still lose on defense because frankly, I can't do it all. I'm not banning. I'm not even UGC cardboard. 18! Thankfully for match 18, I actually won, breaking the three streak of humiliating losses. I would like to apologize to Rins, the medic on the enemy team. They were just not having good luck that night. I played a bunch of matches with them. Anytime I was playing against him, I won. Anytime I was on his team, I lost. It's not even their fault. This guy isn't throwing. He's trying his ass off. He just has horrible luck. 19! And speaking of wins, match 19 was a win. I got placed in Contract Killer 3. I have no idea what that means. It could be a low ranking, it could be a high one, it could be meaningless, and it probably is. Especially if there's 15 or less players at any one given time. I'd honestly probably prefer if I get put in a super low ranking, because I've heard from other people that if your rank is too high, you just can't find matches. And this is a good time to give my first impressions of comp. And my first impressions are that it's bad, but not nearly as bad as I thought it was. Maybe that's because my expectations were suitably low, but I did have like a pretty okay time so far. I feel like I'm getting those intense games where everyone's trying their ass off some amount more than casual. The good games are worth the bad ones, at least right now. I don't think they're worth the wait though, because these queues are taking hours. But hey, the queue is kind of fun. My favorite thing about the queue is that while you're in a casual match and your queue pops, you have 10 seconds to pull off some insane shit. before you get sucked into deep Brazil. And while I'm here, I might as well provide some stats. I've had 19 matches, 10 wins, 9 losses. Of these 19 matches, I've queued 30 times. I've had 11 failed queues. One of these was a bail because we ended up in turbine. One of these was a player purposefully trolling to keep us trapped in the setup phase by constantly rejoining. Three of these were purposeful bails because somebody recognized an aimbotter. And the other six were the usual connection fails. Honestly, my main complaint about the mode right now uh, is that it's very jarring and takes some readjustment to suddenly have all your video settings, network settings, view model settings, and scripts disabled. I feel like no ban list 6s is going to get pretty grating on me pretty soon, provided I ever get in any matches where people are trying to break no ban list 6s. But for right now, I really haven't ran into any of those and it's been okay. And the map pool seems mostly fine, with the exception of Turbine, but I really I haven't gotten to play Turbine yet, so maybe it's great. Uh, I will say, I'm definitely not a huge fan of the payload maps. I think the payload map Maps gotta fucking go. Um, I'd prefer if the payload maps were replaced by like more maps like Gorge. Gorge has been a pretty good play experience every time I'm on it. And I think that might just be because the player base for this mode is super new. And for super new players, the simpler the map, the better. And I think that's about the last time I'm gonna have anything positive to say about Valve Comp. Because immediately after my placements, I was put into aimbot six stack hell. <laughs> All right, my first Q for 20 failed because several players recognized more aimbotters on the enemy team and left. However, actual Q20 was the exact same situation. I'm playing against the aimbotters, but the aimbotters are fucking garbage. On offense, we roll two Vax Medics. On defense, we stacked Wrangler NGs and hid behind sightlines. We didn't get very far, but we did get it very slightly farther than them. It's not much of a win, but fuck it, dude. I'll take it. 21! And then my first queue for 21, I bumped into the same script kitties. I was locked in a lobby with them, while one of them wrote their school shooter manifesto in chat. They refused to cap last, so we really couldn't do anything until enough people bailed from the match that it invalidated the match. I was hoping to get a lot of matches in today on Saturday, but clearly that's not happening. I need to try to do what I can to dodge all the cues with these script kitties on modes with non-deterministic endpoints. So anytime I'm in 5 CP with them, I gotta go. Attack, defend, payload, and king of the hill are probably fine. My next queue was the following day, and it was the first day of Scream Fortress. I went from being able to find one or two matches during peak hours to zero. Check out this chart of players. At this point, I'm just gonna stop noting most of the failed cues unless something notable happens. After this, the failed cues just became more common than successful ones. On the bright side, sometime later, I did get into match 21. And it was on Viaduct, King of the Hill. My first King of the Hill match, which is great. King of the Hill is awesome. I really wish there were more King of the Hill maps in rotation. Unfortunately, I was with Cheating Babies again. Uh, we did our best to combat them and actually did win round one. But after that, they turned on all the rage hacks and there was nothing we could 
could do. 22! So match 22 was a wash. Like, a complete, alienating, one-sided role on the enemy team. I didn't die at all, but I didn't really get to play the game at all. I know it's messed up, but I think I'd have preferred another game with the cheaters on the enemy team. At least then I have, like, adversity. 23! Match 23 was another rollover. Like, nothing to say. Everyone was disorganized, but we did just kind of walk on the enemy team for two rounds and leave. Uh, incredible that the bottom fracking soldier, uh, chose this time to be toxic, though. Like, if you're gonna be toxic, at least be good at the game. 24! It was a loss. Straight loss. But I did have the world's most toxic medic. It was hysterical to watch him die to a bomb, and then watch him come unhinged in chat. Unfortunately, um, our team really only had three competent players, and the enemy team had, like, five, so we lost. They could consistently have one or two competent players suicide in on our med, and then the other three could just clean up while our engineer just kind of fucking sat there. 25! More spinbotting losers. Unfortunately, I didn't recognize that they were spinbotting, but thankfully they decided not to trap me in fucking spawn for three hours. Feels like the majority of the matches I end up in have some script kitty or another now. 26. And batch 26 was the same story. More script kitties. Well, more is wrong. It's not more, it's the same guys. Like, Valve, here's their names. They've been doing this for months. And even more, unfortunately, a bunch of people quit mid-match, so it invalidated the match. So I had to requeue and hope I find another match. Actual match 26 was the same guys. I tried to warn my team. I tried to give them strats on how to beat these losers. And, you know... They, of course, ignored me. And that's all of the matches I managed to complete in October. Dude, I was getting, like, one match every three days. 27! Match 27 was my first match in November. After everyone was hopefully sick of Halloween, so hopefully I could get some more comp games in. My first queue in November <laughs> ended up in Turbine. Man, if that's not a fucking omen. This queue did not fire, because it was Turbine. It seems like every time I end up in Turbine, somebody bails. Which is kind of a shame, because I was in the right headspace to play comp Turbine. I'm a fucking Thankfully, though, um, match 27 was actually a good match. Like, my first match in a month, a month, was a good match. It was a loss, which is fine. I don't mind losses as long as they're close, right? Like, this match was full of every dirty 6v6 Valve comp trick in the book. Stacking medics, stacking demos, vaccinators, everything you can think of. One team would do something, the other team would swap to counter them. Genuinely a really great game. I got to do some wild plays like swapping to Demo Knight to kill a Vax Medic. Just great fun. 28! I'm getting kind of annoyed that so often it comes down to me to counterpick whatever is going on on the enemy team. If there's a sniper ruining my team on huge sight lines because Bad Water is not a map designed for sixes, now it's my job to counter snipe that sniper while the rest of my team just sort of aimlessly walks into sight lines as pyro or whatever. At least I got some extremely funny kills. And my knee-jerk reaction is to say that this is a good match, but I'm starting to feel like these back-to-back-to-back-to-back script kitty matches have really ruined my standards for what a good match is. The only other thing to talk about is that this is the first time I experienced the dreaded comp TF2 crashes. Once at the beginning of the match, and once midway through. No idea why. Yeah, so, um, I did- I think I- I think I did find out why. Uh, for some reason, swapping to Engineer crashes my game. Uh, and it only happens some of the time. 29! Yeah, baby! Finally got a match on CTF. And, uh, I don't know. The, the match was okay. Extremely disorganized. It lasted only three minutes. I was super excited that nobody bailed the queue when they saw Turbine. I just wish that this was a much more balanced match where everyone was trying their ass off. I think I saw the enemy team less than three times. And most of the players spent all of their time arguing about how shit CTF is. They were so distracted about arguing, I was able to just solo cap as med. Something I did notice, though, is that, um, they actually did adjust the mode a little bit for comp. They removed crits on capture. Like, they have the premonition to remove some of the fucked up shit about the mode, but not the rest of it. Hardy. Uh, this was just a one-sided stomp. I have no idea if this heavy on my team was cheating or not. I didn't notice it in the game, but after the game, when I was reviewing this footage, I did see it. This was kind of an alienating one-sided march over some guys. Sandivon! And speaking of script kitty, it's another dog shit match against the usual six stack.
But, you know, despite that, this match was actually genuinely good. We four-stacked heavies with Metal Fists and Vaccinator. Uh, unfortunately, that got us all the way to last, but last is really hard to win on when they've got a camping aimbotting sniper, because, again, bad water sucks. So I just bombed him after my medic buffed me with the direct hit, and then I camped their spawn exits for the entire time to prevent them from leaving while my team capped. If I had thought to bomb in sooner with the direct hit, we probably could have won easily, but instead I spent way too much time trying to counter snipe. Regardless though, on offense they stacked three aimbotting snipers. They were so desperate to win, which is kind of funny. And you know what? I'm not really upset. I'm incredibly proud of how well my team did. When I started hunting for Q32, I got three failed Qs with the script kitties. I have no real interest in playing with these guys more than I already have, but it is sort of incredible though. They're doing this shit for like 40 hours a week, like damn near eight hours a day, every day, with like 12 hour shifts on the weekends. But it's like clockwork, right? It's like they're clocking into work. Or they're playing when they're not at school or working at Wawa's or whatever. And that made me think, right? I bet I could map out exactly when they play and for how long. Because teamwork.tf also has this section at the bottom of their Valve matchmaking comp stats page. It lists the last 10 completed comp matches and when they happened. I reached out to the teamwork.tf Twitter page to see if I could get like a complete data dump of all that info so I can build out their schedules. But in the meantime, if they don't get back to me, I can probably map out when these guys play just by looking at snapshots of this page on the Wayback Machine and by looking at every clipped file I have and when it was taken. Anyway, while waiting for an answer from teamwork.tf, I re and got another match with a different aimbotting nerd. Thankfully, this guy sucked so bad we stomped him into fucking paste. We rolled out as six scouts to mid, through mid, and still won the game against this aimbot sniper and his bot medic. He rage quit and so did his little bot medic, invalidating the match. Incredible. A little bit of a bummer, right? Because I would have won another match, but uh, that's okay. Because with my next re I got a rematch. We blew that little piss baby's back out. Just absolutely steamrolled this loser. I'm also glad the map was Vanguard. Um, I don't think this really would have been super feasible on a map with long sight lines. But the nerd did just lose repeatedly on the prior map too, so whatever. Either way though, the double back-to-back -back loss made him log off for the night, which is pretty funny. I never saw him again, and that's a shame because I would have loved to have kept bullying him. Dude sucks. 33. Match 33 was a pretty reasonably balanced, standard fair Valve comp match. Pretty sure the default meta for at least low-ranking Valve comp is Vaccinator heavies. And weirdly enough, our heavy swapped to the Hulong heater for extra damage on the enemy heavy, and it worked, because we had a pyro on our team. This, it just meant we were winning the DPS race while both pumping our heavies full of Vax buffs. Kinda crazy. So default! Just another one-sided stomp. I rolled out Demo Knight to merc the enemy med while he was on Vaccinator for like 10 seconds, and I never died and went on a 10 kill streak. Just not a great match, unfortunately. Like, Demo Knight's not hard to deal with. It also looks like at some point I deranked down to Contract Killer 2 in the middle of some of these matches. I don't know when, and I don't really care. Target five! So, in queuing for match 35, I got a couple back-to-back -back queues with the same aimbotters. None of the queues fired, but um, this does give me a few more data points for, you know, this chart I'm building. It's, o it's been almost a week, and teamwork.tf still hasn't gotten back to me, so I'm probably gonna start collating the data I do have from matches and build a rough outline of their frequent playtimes and then when I did actually get into match 35 half an hour later, it was a good match. I don't know, it was a loss, but it was a challenge, and I was actually able to play the game, which is the narrowest, thinnest silver lining. This match was full of memorable moments like a player quitting less than two minutes in, our medic popping crits on me after I ran out of ammo, our medic running crits at all because Vaccinator is so prevalent in this meta. My medic just jumping into a sentry to commit suicide. My medic refusing to build uber pre-round. Half of my team going AFK mid-match. But hey, at least it was pretty close. Three points to the enemy team's four, and this bodes well for my queues today. Usually when you queue for matches, you end up with a lot of the same players, so if I end up with these guys, there's really good odds I can have some good matches. I don't even care about winning, I just want to play the game and have a good time. 46! Same deal, same medic, playing against the same team. And that team had this super annoying scout. Crazy good aim, or he was cheating, one of the two. I don't even care anymore. Eventually, I did get to swap off to Gunslinger to deal with them, and that was fun. The games actually started turning around after that, and I did get to go fucking insane 
insane with the Widowmaker. Just carving through this entire six stack over and over and over again. I'll take a loss anytime for clips like this and a match like this. To be frank, whether or not this guy is legit, this was a really, really good game, and it lasted like 30 minutes. I know people hate 5 CP for how grindy it can be. This was a drug out, bare knuckle fight that lasted damn near forever. 37! Just a standard match but with a really genuinely good meta on my team. Despite that, um, my team's coordination needed some work. It's kind of my fault. I'm not in voice chat. We all kept getting separated and falling apart. Either way, though, we did win, so I guess I shouldn't complain too much. My personal favorite part of this match is where I kill their medic and then the sniper, and then from behind this pillar comes a soldier and a heavy to eat me alive. I don't know how much harder I can carry than this, I'll be honest. One person on my team even failed to join the match, and it still fired. I go on a 14 kill streak, but my team can't keep it together. We lost 1-2. 39! It's about time. My curse with granary has been broken. I feel like I've had nothing but horrible matches ever since I got locked in granary by the spinbotting kids. And while this match wasn't great, at least I won. Thanks to this guy E, he's just a big crybaby. He's realistically pretty good when he actually plays, but most of the time I see him in Q, he's just being toxic, saying slurs, and rage quitting. 40. And right on Q, here's E on my team. But they were completely silent, they got several really good picks, and put in their fair share of work, which is good. Because without them, I don't think we would have won. This match was a tenuous, stressful, and a hard match. Nobody on my team went medic, but we didn't have anybody that could frag either, so I went engineer to try to paper over the fact that we didn't have a medic, or anybody that could kill people. Eventually, we turned one of the matches where we didn't have a medic into a win, and then the next game, one of the newbies did go med, so we just smushed these games. 41! So this match was wild. I was gonna leave. The usual aimbotting script kitties are on the enemy team, but I had a good feeling. So we rolled out cheeseball anti-sniper strats right off the bat and pushed in their asshole. 42! Again, more cheaters, I think, maybe. The enemy team had a guy with a vac ban, a guy named script kitty, and it was a party of direct hitting soldiers with extremely good aim, but no game sense. Here's them trying to spawn camp our forward spawn while our spy back caps and loses them the round. If they were hacking, the hacks were kind of bad, but regardless, this match was a miserable one too. We probably could have turned it around if my team was a little bit better or if I could carry a little harder. I don't know if I can imagine anything more infuriating than dying and watching my medic hold W into combat. Why? Nobody is making you do this. Why are you dropping Uber for no reason? I feel like I'm banging my head against a wall here. Here's my team's heavy getting a single kill. I'm pretty sure this was his only kill. And then walking in the wrong direction. Like, I, I love this clueless little man, but I'm in hell, dude. Like, not elo hell, real hell. 43! I ran into the usual cheating kids again, so IQ dodged and took down another data point in my little chart. Unfortunately, dodging didn't really save me, though. Actual match 43 is pretty upsetting. This heavy is sitting in spawn, saying slurs, spamming noisemakers, you know, usual friendly stuff. I was willing to let it slide and ready up for the match and play because... Frankly, him sitting in spawn, not feeding the enemy medic free uber saws, is significantly more useful than some of the players I've played with. And the queue took like three hours. Midway through us pushing last, when someone threatened to report the friendly, uh, he turned on his aimbot and we walk over the enemy team. I don't really know what to do at that point. I left it in the video. I've done everything I can to try to dodge as many script kitties as possible. And I can dodge him going forward. I know his username and his steam ID. 44! Unfortunately, that's what I had to do for about the rest of the day. The pseudo-friendly script kitty kept ending up on my team, so I spent the entire time on Q cooldown. And match 44 was a bust. Uh, my team rolled a bunch of heavies and scouts and pyros on Badlands. The scouts and pyros loved to bleed in, and the heavies couldn't really do a whole lot. Badlands has a really, really tall spire, and you kind of need to be able to rocket jump to the top of it. So we lost. 45! This one was an uneventful roll on the enemy team. No aimbotting losers. Nothing racist in chat. Just a game of Team Fortress 2. 46. This was another match against the usual crowd. You know who they are. I was going to Q dodge and suffer the 30 minute penalty, but a couple members of my team accused them of cheating, and that again gave me hope we could cheese our way through this match and stomp them. 
And we did. Metal fists plus buffalo steak to mid to get there with my team, and then heavy them down the rest of the way with the vaccinator. 47! This was a loss, but a really close one. Both teams had somebody idling in spawn, doing nothing, and we only lost 1-2 after three pretty extended matches. Um, like, I, I can't be upset. Unfortunately, after both teams had their players return to the game, it swung pretty heavily in Blue's favor. 48! 48 was horrible. E joined my game, immediately quit at the start of match one, and we were down a player. There was some edgelord Nazi, someone was DDoSing the server, and we did our best. We turned around one match after a ton of effort, but just kind of crumpled the other two. 49! 49 was okay. Uh, very weird though. I ran into Glogak, the cheater, but instead of actually aimbotting and shit, he just idled and spawned the entire time. I'm pretty sure these guys do annual deranking sessions individually to stop themselves from climbing to ranks where they can't find matches anymore. But don't let that make you think this match was unfair. On the flip side, to balance out their guy that sat idle and spawned the entire match, we had a guy that abandoned to the match, so you know, even Stevens. Regardless though, to combat their possible aimbotter, I rolled a buffalo steak and fists to mid, and we walked over them. I'll be honest, um, I think buffalo steak fists to mid is busted as shit and should probably be fixed. This thing is fucked up. 50! Easy win. I pulled out Natasha heavy to mid and ate their scouts and pyros alive, leaving the rest of their team to pick up the pieces. I'm- I'm really, really, really starting to understand why the Fists of Steel, Buffalo Steak, and Natasha are banned in sixes. Just genuinely unfun to play against, very strong, and will stomp most low-level games. Kinda at the point where I'm just gonna print out a list of banned weapons and then pin them above my laptop. But time for the 50 match check-in. What are my thoughts? I'm a little annoyed with the mode on the whole. 13 out of 50 matches had blatant aimbotters, meaning a full one-fifth of your matches in this mode are just invalidated right off the bat. This percentage would be higher, but after match 40, I started abandoning when I saw blatant aimbotters and didn't think my team could cheese our way into a win. Not like the end of the world, but so much more annoying when queues take like an hour or more to pop. Here's every time I got queued with any member of the aimbotters, even on failed queues or queues where I think they're throwing the match because believe it or not i don't want to play a 5v6 no matter what side of the 5v6 i'm on this gives me a pretty good idea of when to avoid queuing usually late afternoons friday through sunday and very occasionally late afternoons on the weekend when they're off school looks like my best bet is to play on weekdays when they have homework so i'm probably gonna try to do that from here on out weirdly enough i've never encountered them on a wednesday i just don't know if that's coincidence or you know there's another reason obviously this is all offset by when i play and my availability but i do my best to queue basically anytime i feel like i could commit 45 minutes to a match simultaneously i I also looked through about every match, and about half of the games had somebody either rage quit or idle on one team or the other, which is equally bad. Especially because it looks like if you rage quit or just leave mid-match, the only penalty is that 30 minute cooldown. There's nothing else, seemingly. On the flip side though, I'm not quite sick of no ban list sixes. Especially because I started letting myself just take advantage of everything broken I could. So much of the meta seems to find around Heavy's Vax, which is a little funky. Turns a lot of matches into slogs, but whatever. More importantly though, I'm a little irritated with how many times I see anybody run Kritzkrieg at all. Kritzkrieg is just not worth running in this mode, ever. Vaccinator is very easy, it counters Kritzkrieg every time, even from disadvantage. 51! This match was kind of a crazy roll. I helped win the mid fight as heavy by watching watching where the enemy heavies were going and then hiding my body beneath this ledge and killing both the heavy and soldier that hopped on the ledge. I'm very lucky that they decided to go left instead of right because I would not have been able to do this the other way around. For a moment, I got scared that we ended up queuing against that one blatant aimbotter that pretends to be friendly, but it turns out this guy was just letting us kill him because we swept through the rest of his team. 52. 52 was a weird one. I really haven't been walking out of spawn and looking at stuff pre-round before this, but I think a good amount of the time when somebody's doing something pre-round, like a specific class, they're probably going to be that class in the game proper. So I looked at their team, saw three scouts, and I went Wrangler mini sentry. I'm unsure if we actually got much value of me shutting down huge swaths of the map because the team just kind of rolled on these guys regardless, but I feel like I did something. At the very least, I denied three players in the enemy team a lot of area, even if I didn't see secure very many kills. 53! Woo! Turbine! This is my first, like, genuinely competitive 
turbine match. And it was a fucking shit show. The server was dying for everyone, and after two caps, the enemy team was stacking three engineers. So we had to make a bunch of coordinated uber pushes to cap the intel. Initially, I went engineer just to try to compensate for the S tier server, but it's clear that wasn't working. Eventually, I went direct hit to try to kill sentries, which half worked. I could kill sentries, but I couldn't kill people in my face with all the lag and teleporting. Eventually, I just went heavy to try to make it all easier. And with a coordinated push, I picked up the intel and got it to mid before I died, and then my team was able to complete the delivery. And uh, my thoughts on Turbine. Now that I've actually had a match where people were trying their asses off, it was kind of funny. I don't think it's good, and we really need class limits. I appreciate that Valve removed crits on cap, but I wish we had better CTF maps. Like, this is pretty bad. I guess I should just be happy it's not 2 fort. 54! 54 was a loss because my team threw and went 3 spies. Very cool. Maybe we should institute some kind of limitation on what people can play, and call it like, I don't know, class limits? 55! This was excellent. Like, really, really good. I'm genuinely, I'm like pleased as punch. A strong back and forth game 1, and then a brief fight round 2. I wanted to play a combat class, but my frame rate just couldn't support it. I don't know what was going on, but my frame rate was like, low 30s. And it's not, ha I've not had this issue before. Not in comp, not out of comp. I'd like to take a moment to thank Valve for forced video settings. My team struggled to keep me alive and made a very valiant effort while I struggled to use the vaccinator because my frame rate was just shitting itself. Definitely takes me back to like my old Pentium computer I had when I was 13. 56. This match was something. They had one hyper competent player. The server was fucking dying. Maybe it's because it was being DDoSed. I'm gonna compare the players in this game to the players in all the other other games that the server was shitting itself on, and maybe I'll find some data points that line up. Either way though, it's a loss. 57! I didn't have high hopes for this match in the beginning. I connected and my ping was shitting itself. I was convinced I would need to start dodging a new group of DDoSing losers to play this stupid mode. And then I looked at the server location. Frankfurt. I live in America. It is peak American hours. Why am I in Frankfurt? Thankfully, Engineer is a class that exists, so I was the designated NG bitch on Badwater. The enemy team that consisted of seemingly three pyros, a crits medic, a spy, and one soldier couldn't beat a level 3 sentry while the rest of my team stomped them, so we just one-handedly. If their team swapped off of pyro, this wouldn't have been even a contest. It's like, I was struggling. <laughs> I tried to do the jag effect rollout, fucked it up real bad, forgot the wrangler. First time I've ever been placed in such a weird server, but you know what? I'll, I'll take it. We won. 58. Pretty good match. Like, I, I'm alright. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's Gorge, and I, I've loved Gorge so far. Enemy team was trying to do busted Wrangler stuff, but in turn, we rolled out double med to first, took second after a few uber pushes. I even got the coveted med pick as med twice. I feel like pretty bad for this guy, right? Gets hit with the bomb, surfs it straight into my uber saw. Their spy was accusing our pyro of cheating, but I really doubt the bottom scoring backburner pyro was cheating. More likely, the pyro just spy checked and the spy got mad. I even connected a crossbow on him while he was invisible. Guy is just very predictable. 59! Another two med match where we just rolled the enemy team again. Turns out you can just run anything you want as long as you have two meds. Two dragon fury pyros, two meds, one stock, one vax. Sure, it'll get you there. I'm a little concerned that my hypothesis about being DDoSed earlier wasn't incorrect though. Uh, this game, one of the players opposite suddenly grew to over a thousand ping and DC'd at the start of match one. If someone was DDoSed the enemy team, I have no idea who. 60. I basically had to suckle on my heavy's teat because most of my team was useless and pray everyone else played around us. Or Pyro, who was new to the game, spent a lot of time screaming that the enemy team bought pay to win weapons, which, you know, don't exist. Here's a clip of my beloved baby Pyro walking into a mini sentry and dying. I should be like furious I'm in a match with this guy, or if he was medic I probably would have been, but you know what? I'm just glad TF2 has the occasional new player now. Hopefully comp doesn't scare him away from the rest of the game. 61! 61 was just an embarrassing roll. Nice to full carry a team on my back. Went on a godlike kill streak on defense as heavy, which isn't impressive. Like, I'm doing stupid shit, like being way too forward. But on offense, I did see that they swapped to vaccinator. So I dropped their med as sniper from the gates while our demo man was pushing him. Later on, the enemy med learned his lesson and kept exclusively bullet resistance on. But we capped point one a couple seconds later, and the match was over by then anyway. 62! God, th what a Weird match. I roll out Vax, anticipating the usual heavies. Instead, the enemy team rolls two demo knights, 
a spy and a pyro. My team really wasn't competent enough to deal with demo knights and pyros, so I just gave up on playing medic when the enemy demo knights started rolling us over. I swapped to heavy because it just countered their entire team, right? Like, pyros can't do much about heavy, demo knights can't do much about heavy, spies can't do much about heavy as long as you turn around. One of the other players on my team swapped to med, and we were actually able to take last. And then again next game. 63! Looks like my schedule of the aimbotting six stack has worked pretty well until now. This is the first game I bumped into the usual crowd, which is significantly below percentage. Unfortunately, my team was too dumb to actually coordinate, and it wouldn't have been that difficult. I was begging my med to go vaccinator, and I was begging the other three players on my team to do anything except walk into fucking sightlines. 64! In the press blurb for Gorge, it was described as a control point match designed for quick matches and frantic fast play. And that blurb, it's fucking right. This match was fucking incredible. Maybe my favorite match so far. Genuinely so good. On defense, they roll us. Our med immediately drops full uber to a fucking huntsman of all things. Of the four players that tried to do a forward hold, I'm the only one that makes it out. Now we're doing a defensive hold. And that fails, because they're up four people. They cap. We regroup on second. We hold it briefly until our medic pops crits into an ubered combo. We are 0 for 2 on Ubers from this medic. The enemy team caps at a little bit over 2 minutes. Here's how offense goes. We push left with Uber. This baits out enemy Uber. I duck back into spawn and swap off demo to sniper. I peek right and pick med, then heavy. Then I surf a rocket back into spawn, and then clap that soldier with a 150. I die in the push to first, but we take first. I swap back the demo and murder everyone in my goddamn way to second. We take second in less than a minute and a half. One of the most fun matches of TF2 I've ever played. Wild and frantic. One more thing goes wrong for either team and it probably falls the other direction. 65! Shit show. One hatless pyro on my team with minutes in the game. Two guys with the Manco special which usually means they're either aimbotting out the ass or have like five hours in the game. In this case, they had five hours in the game and it was a straight roll on us. Near the end, I just gave up and said fuck it and went to bed. 66! I'm diagnosing the players in this match with chronic pubbing syndrome. Our team would win a team fight, then they'd hold W instead of watching the cart, instead of pushing the objective. I think we gave up like two points on defense in this manner. We won and it was a hard fought victory, but it could have been so much simpler and easier. Shout out to the enemy med though. Genuinely super cool guy. He just immediately calls a duel against me. Very funny, I love that guy. 67. I, I really didn't have any impact on how this match fell one way or the other. The enemy team tried to cheese, right? They roll out three heavies, an NG and a med, and our medic just took the vaccinator. That's all it took. Literally, no other decision mattered that game. I really didn't even need to touch my keyboard, and this still would have been a dub. Unfortunately, this was the last game I was able to play this day. There was only like 12 guys playing, and one guy would just join a comp match and quit pre-round to invalidate the match every 30 minutes so that nobody could play at all. 68. If that recent gorge match was gotta go fast, this one was gotta go, uh, slow. An extremely grindy game. For the first round and a half, both teams had two autofill bots because both teams had people leave pre-round, but the game still fired and it's still on my comp ledger. Each team ran two or three vaccinators to create like nigh unkillable monsters of heavies. There was a push to mid that lasted like two minutes because both teams had insane resistances but not enough dps to overcome them and it just came down to who had more uber advantage and that was something we managed to accomplish with a few cheeky uber saws eventually the game just ended uh when the other team overextended into mid letting us cap second immediately followed by last with a double back cap now i'm not saying that i want every match to be a fucked up vaccinator fest but i am saying this is the most fun i've had playing tf2 in weeks 69 all right, first match is Smith Miss. This match was a crazy Christmas gift. It was just Swiftwater first and second. Pretty close on rollout, or I guess first team fight. Uh, they had a demo night pick me on Vax, so I swapped to Quick Fix and Uber for the rest of the game, and things went a million degrees better. They got one point, and we stonewalled at second. We just managed to cap second, so we won. I duel a direct hit soldier to earn full Uber to take the next push through the choke with Uber. Just a great match. Really, really great. I will note, though, I need, I need players to stop injuring themselves pre-match if I have the vaccinator. We need to enter the first team fight with a full buff on everyone, and I need crit heals to give everyone a full buff with the vaccinator. Quit fucking rocket jumping. 70! This was another one of those matches where it was so much of a roll, I could have sat and spawned the entire time. 
I noodled around a little bit of scout as sniper as demo. I don't know. We won, but it doesn't feel like a victory. 71! Well, ran into one of the aimbotting script kitties again. I just decided to bail. I assumed it wouldn't actually show up on my ledger, but it did, so now it's in the video. None of the other matches I've bailed on have showed up in the ledger. I don't know why that is. 72! Just more vaccinator slog. I gotta I got say, I am so fucking sick of playing with the vaccinator and with heavies. So I finally got there. I'm finally sick of it. I am extremely looking forward to never having to play another game of sixes with the vaccinator again. This match was a loss. Game fired, but we were down one player from the beginning. A 5v6 that fires. I would fucking kill to know what criteria Valve uses to decide what causes a match to start and what invalidates it. And these bots are like worse than useless. They feed enemies uber. They walk all the way back to first while we're trying to cap last for no reason. But I don't know. This match was fine. Otherwise, we won one match, the enemy team won two. So, a loss, but a close one. 73! Another loss. Kind of unfortunate after like a 70% win rate since 50. I don't know. We lost 1-2, again. The one match we did win, it was off the back of this Gibbous guy. He's insane. Genuinely cracked. Rented Market Gardener, Merc Badge, Pyrovision, Gibbous. I love this guy. 74! Dude, tonight just wasn't my fucking night for comp. Four matches in a row with either people rage quitting, aimbotting script kitties, or people throwing, or fucking all of the above. Look, here's our sniper, idling in spawn and refusing to play the game. And he didn't time out. Here's our soldier who rage quit. I can kill their entire team and win entire team fights solo and it won't matter because eventually I'm gonna lose one of them and then we get rolled and we lose. Look, 10 kill streak. Look, sick air pipe. And then I die once and the match is over. So this is post Noah. Turns out the guy that was idling is a member of one of the six stack of aimbotting script kitties. And he's just throwing matches to D rank. Incredible that they managed to keep affecting matches even when they aren't cheating. 75! Match 75 was dog shit. One sided stomp. Like, I, we just walked on them. I don't know if all the bad luck from last night means these are the matches I'll be getting for a while. Even more annoying, though, my Q popped seven times today, and this was the only match that fired. 75 match check-in. What are my thoughts? <laughs> you should know my thoughts. Uh, but I am entirely sick of Valve Comp at this point, especially after these last five matches. Cannot wait to be done with this garbage. I've tried to do everything I can to enjoy this mode and make it usable, but it just fucking isn't. ELO doesn't work because there aren't enough players to make it work. And even if there were enough players, you can dodge losing ELO. I can create a schedule of the primary group that aimbots to ruin this mode and I'll still run into more cheaters. Or people that join and leave matches to force everyone to re for 12 hours a day. Or people throwing matches. And even when a match does fire and everyone is playing the game, it is a slog through stacks of medics with the vaccinator. Community comp has a ban list for a reason and I now very much know why it does. At 25 matches, the no ban list was refreshing. At fucking 75, it is teeth grinding, dude. And you know what else is teeth grinding? How slow it takes to get these matches. I've completed 75 matches. It is December 2nd. I started this on August 14th. After 110 days, I have found 75 matches that fired. A little less than one a day that I actually spend queuing. It's no wonder that the only people in this mode are either bitter or are new or are cheating. Everybody else knows better about this shit, and now I'm squarely in camp bitter. I'd have stopped doing this a long time ago if I wasn't making a YouTube video, and I'd have stopped even longer ago if I knew how miserable it was gonna make me. Anyway, here's some stats. Figuring out the schedule of the aimbotting stack seemingly worked. Hooray. My win rate went up and the percentage of games that I played with cheating nerds went down. Only 12% of my games had someone aimbotting from matches 50 to 75, whereas from 25 to 50 it was 40%. Obviously 12% isn't good, but it isn't half of my games. Unfortunately though, because I wasn't constantly fighting aimbotters, uh, I had to contend with the actual flaws more core to the design of comp, which I didn't expect, such as a lack of punishment for abandoning a match, and a lack of class limits, and a lack of weapon bans, and how shit payload is for sixes. 76! 76, a wash. I don't know. I turned on VC again. Maybe it's my fault, right? And maybe the guy in half the lobbies blasting ear rape stopped joining. Unfortunately, um, instead of receiving teamwork and callouts, I received a flog pyro bitching at everyone. Hey, I just want to let you guys know that running useless scout loadouts, like two of them, is not going to make us win.
Yeah, sure. Fuck it, dude. Uh, this is the same plug pyro that runs into a semi-competent heavy repeatedly and dies. Dude, it feels like seeing pyros on your team is just like a fucking death knell for your team. Py pyros are just not that useful most of the time. It, I mean, just heavies are so common. That being said, uh, no ear rape, so I might leave this shit on for the last 25 matches. 77! Another match with another aimbotting virgin. And my team was down a player. And we had a trolger. And we had a demo knight. Another death knell for how well your team's gonna do. This is so fucking frustrating. Because this is the authentic Valve comp experience. I would have bailed from the match, but I want this video to be over. Dude, I don't want to have to wait an additional 30 minutes to re for another match with another kid with Lamau Box. I want to complete these last 23 matches in a straight line so I can go back to doing pubs and pickup games and whatever the fuck else in my spare time. I'm not gonna plan my schedule around when the script kiddies are on anymore. I'm just gonna burn through these matches. Like, I've already proven that finding out their schedule worked. I don't care anymore. 78! More aimbotting virgins. Just more of them, of course. Again, th this is so easily a match we could have won if my team didn't start throwing for no reason. Instead of just fucking listening to me when half the server told them that these three guys were cheating, my team spends 10 minutes being like, I think the guy hitting headshots on invis spies is aimbotting. Does that seem sus to you? Yes, it fucking does. You don't need to confirm 90 times. Do something to, do something to contribute. Whatever. I, I spent most of this game sitting idle and spawn and troubleshooting a weird frame rate issue I've been having. I'm not wasting my time on this shit ass match. 79. Hey, <laughs> would you look at that? A, a match without the usual stack of aimbotting kids. In between this match and the last one, there were a lot of cues where I ended up on their team. You didn't see it, thanks to the magic of editing. Despite that I'd rather complete this video as fast as possible, there's a limit to how low I'm willing to stoop. So every time I ended up on their team, I bailed from the match. I don't want free wins from cheaters on my team. I just, I don't, I won't. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, this match wasn't much of a fight. And I don't mean that it was an outright roll. I mean that it wasn't much of a fight in the same way that a slap fight between two four-year-olds isn't much of a fight. Both teams just kind of ineffectually slapped at each other until someone started crying picked up their toys, went home, and rage quit. Thankfully, it was a member of the enemy team that rage quit instead of our team, so we won, but still. Haiti. Well, this match sucked. Our team had one guy that joined, never readied up, never chose a class, and never played the game. I love playing at a disadvantage, and I love that there's no punishment for this. A1. Cool game. Um, my game crashed as I tried to panic swap to NG, putting us down a player for a while, which was long enough for the enemy team to cap twice. Cool. Good game. Haiti too. But that's all right. I shoes in the other foot now, and I'm the foot. I'm stepping on people. Yeehaw. Another one-sided stomp. Like I. I I hate these matches. It, it, it literally doesn't matter what I do. These are the worst. Just extremely boring and unfun for everyone. 83. This match was pretty good. My first actual good match in like 11 matches. We won 2-1. Genuine competition between two teams. I also got to solo cap after killing half the enemy team, which felt sick as hell. Now, I can't pretend that it's my doing. Uh, my team pushed in with Uber and I arrived late, but I did arrive just in time to steal all the valor. I also got to drop their bed from full uber by hiding from behind them in cafe and bombing. 84! A match. Not a good one, but a match. For the first half of game one, my medic was dead constantly, which was weird because I couldn't figure out why. I hadn't seen him since rollout, and then I figured out after my third defensive second alone, he was using the amputator taunt and getting himself killed over and over again. Not on purpose, just literally didn't know any better. After I asked him to never fucking use that taunt again, uh, things went so much smoother. We won fights, then we won points, then we won matches. 85! Uh, you'll notice I had Glogak the aimbotting script kitty on my team. I took a gamble on him throwing. I figured out if you encounter one of these guys alone, they're usually just throwing to D-rank. And he was throwing to D-rank, so, you know, no biggie. Then we also had this guy. You'll note that I just died. I am walking back from spawn, and this guy falls for a spy disguised as me, who isn't healing him, that also decloaked in front of him. And this guy has the audacity to call that fucking spy good fucking isn't. You are ass. This spy is not good. You know how I know he's not good? He kept feeding me Uber. He gave me like three full Ubers over the course of a match. My team was just this bad that they couldn't win with like multiple free Ubers. This spy is the reason you need Killbind bound to your keyboard. If you're about to feed a medic a free Ubersaw, suicide. 
I, I feel like I'm going insane. Like, it, here's the engineer that builds on last on 5 CP during rollouts. He also fell victim to the spy over and over and over again. 86. Ah, cool. Turbine. At least this was a fast turbine match. It was a loss, but it was fast. 87. Cool. Gorge. Actually, thank God. Like, this was a loss, but at least it was fast. Gorge is known for fast, frantic matches. Enemy team had a sixes veteran who was extremely good at the game, has like multiple plat medals, and my team had someone that rage quit before the first half was over. I refused to play med for my team because frankly, I'm sick of being responsible for people that don't know the basic mechanics of the game. Someone else can volunteer for that. I'm not doing it anymore. Hey, another match on Gorge. Okay, we won and the match was fine, uh, if uneventful. Honestly, the most eventful things that happened is that I killed myself like three times on accident because I fucked up my binds right before this match. They wouldn't know about it. Dude, fuck. <laughs> All right, well, that's on me. I swapped a space bar and my right click and my thumb hurts now. On. Queuing into comp broke my game. I had to rapidly kill TF2, reinstall my HUD, validate files, and then start the game again as fast as possible. Thank God I have TF2 on my SSD. I don't think I would have been able to make it back into this match otherwise. After that, we just kind of rolled over the enemy team. I played heavy, got to mid with stake, our med full-time to crits. We beat their stock uber on build repeatedly, and then just rolled over them game one. Game two, we did the same thing, despite their swap to vaccinate. So whatever 90 90 matches in and this is like the second time I've ran into helpful talkative communicating people in comp <laughs> Genuinely thrilled to be on their team and not the enemy team anyway This match was pretty sorted from go double heavies double med nothing else mattered total stomp fest 91 we, we totally got rolled our medic kept recommending that we get a pyro to handle something on their team? The soldiers, I guess? I have no idea what the fuck a pyro would do about a sentry, but pyro to deal with soldiers is also pretty obviously wrong, so maybe I shouldn't dissect anything they say. After we lost game one, which was admittedly relatively close, one of the three players who could navigate in a 3D space rage quit to preserve their elo, and we lost handedly. So I just swapped the sniper to have some fun. Whatever. 92! Joining comp broke my game again, so I needed to do that rapid fix again. That's cool. I love that playing comp does this. It just deletes a random fucking texture file out of the installation folder. Why? I was also the only person on my team to secure any kills. One person. Of four. Med gets a pass because Med was playing Med. And and then looking at the end game screen, I was one of two people on my team to have even completed my placements. As compared to the enemy team who all have completed their placements. Yeah, sure, that's functional elo. That, that I would call that functional elo, sure. 93! Dude, one time. Just one time. I would like a match where I'm not forced to try to carry. <sighs> Despite my shitty attitude, I think this match was fine. We lost 1-2. There was a lot of back and forth, and I think we had a reasonable chance of winning if the enemy team didn't stack medics. If our team had done the same, this would have been an easy W. It's not like I'm blameless here. So, uh, <laughs> here's a clip of me banny binding to swap loadouts, uh, and then getting backspawned on accident, and then watching my med die that I just accidentally abandoned, which is kind of funny. <laughs> 94! I got my wish. A match where I'm not forced to hard carry, because all the players I complained about getting literally zero kills were on the enemy team this time. I got to mess around with the airstrike, and after we capped Swiftwater in four minutes, we spent like the entirety of defense just messing around with battle medics and stuff. 95! Yeah, another turbine match. Did you know that you can stall out a game of CTF forever by just grabbing the intel and idling behind a sentry? We had a pyro that did that, attempting to stall out the game for hours. Thankfully, uh, my team was smart enough to stop that shit. We let a couple reds bleed in and then murder the pyro so we could cap the intel the pyro was fucking holding. Dude, CTF is just such a dumb choice for this fucking mode. Easy win, I guess. Nobody wants to fucking play turbine. 
96. Another medic game, another easy roll. And it was a cat game. You are making it so fucking difficult to play this game. That, like, that's it. That's it. Uh, there's nothing else to say about this match. It, literally just a boring one-sided stomp. We rolled on them. I, once I got myself killed because I still haven't fixed my binds, I get full uber off an uber saw here, and instead of popping uber, I jump and get myself killed. Dumbass. 97. I'm on the home stretch. I'm almost there. It's 97. And another win. God, please. Look, the face of victory. All that expression. This was a reasonably good match, I guess. I don't know. We won 2-1, but game three, our med just kept dropping to the sniper. In the end, it didn't matter. This was one of those games where I just took heavy to mid and outscored the next closest member on either team by like double. Like the, the I think the average TF2 comp player is so new, they can't handle a heavy. 98. All right, I promise I'm not a heavy main. I don't even like playing heavy. And I, I'm definitely sick of fucking playing heavy after this. But it's, it's, but it's the most efficient path forward when I have all these busted unlocks in my hands. The enemy team had like two pyros, a demo knight, a spy, and an engineer to mid. All of these classes that I can just eat alive. Our pyro also notably like whips ass. He's great at the game, but there just wasn't much the enemy team could do. We had two full-time dedicated pockets. Two medics is too good. It kept me and the other power classes buffed and with so much uptime, there was nothing the enemy team could do except like go to meds themselves. 99! Here's a, uh, a loss, which is fine. Whatever. Um, I, I think we had a really good chance to win if not for my own stupidity and this weird fucking chance encounter. I walk off this ledge because I'm checking the scoreboard to see how many team members are up on either team. And I bump into the enemy pyro who's overhealed. Two pipes in and he won't die. Why was this pyro down here? How did he- where did he get full overheal from? After that though, our med pops crits in response to their uber and we lose that team fight. And then they just rolled that win forward into the next point over and over and over again and we're- we're out. I could get out of this place because the van was my ticket to space in the slam van. This is it, the big kahuna, the last match. The only one that matters. Demo on Metalworks. I fuck up my rollout. I get to the match late after taking a piss. I miss all my pipes. I get no support from the med and it doesn't matter. It's an easy win. I think the enemy team was throwing and our team was rolling busted shit like milk. So that's, that's it, I guess. The authentic comp TF2 experience. So what's my record after all this? And what are my thoughts? I have 56 wins, 44 losses, so a 56% win rate, and an ELO loss of about 50 points. If we invalidate every match against Script Kitties, both wins and losses, um, we're at 52 wins and 29 losses, or about a 64% win rate. Not incredible, but I'm not, like, upset either. I'm sure me being full tilt this entire time did not help my performance, because I'm not an incredible player when I'm not mad. Like, my game sense is weak and my aim is mediocre, but goddamn. Alright, well, let's look at some more stats. It's December 20th. When I started this video in August, I thought it would take like a month. <laughs> no, 128 days. In 100 matches, I have re God, I don't know how many times. I stopped counting and recording them about halfway through because I just don't have the storage for it. My re just exploded after my placements, mostly because of the script kitties. But that wasn't the only delay. Scream Fortress thinned all the players out. Smismis thinned a lot of players out. Game crashes invalidated matches like crazy, both mine and other players. People that trap you in matches just to troll you for an hour by holding the intel or refusing to cap. People that join and then quit games just to force the other 11 people to requeue for an entire day. Comp TF2 literally broke my local installation of TF2 on multiple occasions. If you name it, this project has been delayed by it. Oh, you, you might have forgotten. The point of this video was to judge if comp is worth playing in the year of our lord 2022. It's probably 2023 when this video comes out. So, uh, do I recommend comp? If you have a six stack of your friends, it might be fun for a week to stomp on some randos with busted overpowered loadouts. If you aren't interested in poning some newbies with friends, I'd just steer clear. Unless you want to play some 6v6, hacker v hacker, no spread, no random crits. This is a sparsely populated mode where in almost a fifth of all games, you are going to be forced to deal with someone cheating. So, um, 
what are the good parts of this mode? You get to draw a funny haha pee pee on the end game screen. In the slam bed, Ronnie and Gayan in the slam bed. Uh, anyway, this has been my longest project to date, but I have an even longer one in the works. I also want to thank my friends that I love very much in no particular order. Locky, Sarah, Percy, Kanan, BB, Sion, Alyssa, Jackson, Mary, Teresa. You guys were there for me to talk to while I was ripping out my non-existent hair on this stupid journey. 128 days and countless hours of talking and joking and drinking while I queued for matches. I love you guys very much, and I don't know what I would do without you. I think Reinhardt's kind of like jazz. <laughs> it is kind of like jazz. In the sense uh, that you're using a big hammer most of the time. Yeah. Oh, I like Gallagher jazz. It's a well-respected field. How many people do you expect to get a Gallagher joke here, Noah? Uh, I don't know. I would. That's enough for me. Sometimes you just tell jokes for you. You don't need to tell them for everybody else. Yeah, hey, it's, you're, you're right, actually. Oh, You've got it. Mother, holy shit, bro. Some people need, need to hear that. You got it, right? Fuck you, Locky. Die. <laughs> I, did, <laughs> wow. I did get it. The way that so it at least it is, too. Like